Hello everyone, welcome to Tactica Imperialis and to today's video. Today is something a little bit different, something I haven't done in ever, actually, I don't think. Uh, today is going to be a Age of Sigmar video, and I'm going to be doing a video today that I'm going to preempt the working title, Getting Started with Warhammer Age of Sigmar, uh, because... I've prattled on on this channel about AOS enough times. I've done battle reports, I've done everything short of lore videos because I don't have time for lore videos. Uh, I've done reviews, I've done unboxings, I've done painting streams, I've done everything under the sun for Sigma, but I've never really talked about how I actually went about starting the game because I came across from fantasy and had an established collection. So. For someone who isn't an AOS, or sorry, a fantasy veteran, or is a newer player to AOS, then, well, what do you actually do? Well, since I can't answer that, I went and got some help. Ladies and gentlemen, Xenos of all ages and everything in between, I would like you to welcome to Tactica Imperialis, one of the hosts of Warp Time Radio, Scarlet Kingdom. Hi, this is the third time I've been here, and you can't get rid of me now. <laughs> I mean, basically, I, I made the joke on podcasters that Snipe and Wib are the Adeptus Podcasters cover teachers. So um, <laughs> it's absolutely a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, we've also done a video, it might not be out yet, depending on editing times on each of his ends, uh, over on Scarlet Channel, which is a very similar video, but longer, all about the Horus <laughs> Heresy. Uh, it, this will be shorter than that video, I promise. Um, and you can go and look at that. I'll leave the link to Scarlet's channel in the description. And if the video is out, then I will leave it linked down there as well. You can give it a watch. And also watch all the VODs of Walk Time Radio because they're always good fun. Thank you. So, Age of Sigmar. I suppose this is the part where I step back and let um, Scarlet take the wheel. Um, what are you wanting to do with AOS? And then we can sort of expand that into some general ideas. Okay. Well, um, for just a bit of context, my background is mostly 40k and heresy. I've only tangentially played a very small amount of AOS. The first time I ever played it was when Malign Sorcery dropped last year, or was that the year before? Uh, Malign Portents was the thing before AOS 2. Malign Sorcery was the Endless Spells that came out when AOS 2 it came out. It was the Endless Spells that I, was, I played with. Okay, Malign Sorcery then, yes. So I played uh, one game of that with a start collecting um, Demons of Zinch box I just happened to have laying around. Uh, with my mm -hmm. usual um, play play group, uh, we played it once. Um, then just since then, I I didn't really enjoy the uh, the playstyle of the Zinch army, which is weird given those who know my context. Uh, <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, it, maybe it's just I didn't get the game fully, or maybe it just flows better when you've actually expanded the army beyond that basic five hundred point list you had. Mm. I mean, Zinch is an awkward army to play because of its reliance on spell casting from all sides to really pop off. Yeah. So it was the right army for a Malign Sorcery game, but I've never played a Malign Sorcery yeah. game and they're a bit more complex than the base game of AOS. Yes, and um, since then I've been kind of... Um, it's one of those things where AOS has always been in the back of my mind as something I think I want to try out. And I've, I've yeah. been basically bouncing back and forth between a couple different armies I might be interested in playing. I have finally settled on the one I want to learn to play the game with, which is Skaven. I have, I had, well, that's gone and vanished somewhere. I have the battle tome on my near my feet somewhere. <laughs> and, this one right here. Uh, yep. Tech is. Oh. oh. Pass through no hole, we'll arrive at Scarlet. And it was, it was like the <laughs> peripheral vision of my headphones were blocking it. <laughs> oh dear. Um, okay, so you want to play the AOS once, didn't really like that army, wants to try something new, playing Skaven, where to start? Yeah, that's pretty much the fundamentals of where I'm at. I, I've got a rough sense of how the game plays for the most part. I'm just not particularly good at actually constructing a list for AOS because. Those who it's very it's different. very different compared to both heresy and forty k uh, codexes and black books. Yeah. yeah, so I'm here to learn. <laughs> okay, so first off, let's get the essentials you need out of the way. The first thing you need is the rules. Now, unlike other game systems, uh, the rules are available for free on the Age of Sigmar app. If you have access to the app on iOS and Android, you can get that, and it has the the 
ins the little inset of the core rules, which is about eight or 12 pages for free. So in terms of being able to actually mechanically play the game, you can get them for free. There is more available, obviously, because you can buy the core book if you want. Uh, this is a 300 page chunk uh, lump of paper, which has got all the law, which is a really fantastic bit of law work in here as well as explaining, uh, well, actually, to be honest, it's it's more than 50% law. Uh, correction, it's about 60% law. Um, it then adds in a few bits for open war, narrative play, match play, just a little bit of basics about battle plans, provide some missions for you, how endless spells work, uh, the realms of battle, though I think they may have been updated, um, allegiance abilities, but predominantly it's just a few pages of rules and you can get them all for free. Second thing you'll need to get is the General's Handbook. Now, this is a book that updates every six months to a year. I think it's every year. Uh, the General's Handbook updates. Uh, and this is essentially your update to the game, a guide to everything. Mm -hmm. This thing's about 20 quid uh, UK, um, and it comes with two books. This is the handbook, and in here, these are the pitched battle profiles. These are the points values for every unit in the game. They're updated every six months or every year. So you can always have the points values. The ones in your battle tome, which is your codex, will be wrong. They will have changed. They're in here. Of course. But that's the same for 40k as well, because they're always constantly buffing and changing things in chapter approved and stuff. So it's the same idea as chapter approved, really. Do you, st do um, you get um, the points updates via FAQs when that happens, or is it literally just the once a year thing and you have to... It is, it is in the handbook uh, that they do it. However, the points do update. If you want to build your list, you can build that on the AOS app. You can either pay $1.99 a month for Azir, the like official list builder, but you can also check the cost of any unit in the AOS app for free using the My Battle section. I'll walk you through that off camera if you want because it's kind of a bit of a waste of time <laughs> to do it here and I'm not capturing my phone and all yeah, of that. Yeah, fair enough. But, it, but in here, in the handbook, you get updated rules for... For example, these are the realms that you can play in, the spells and the relics that are available in those realms. Uh, so little extra things you can have if your army's from or playing there. The missions are in here uh, from this year and previous years. Uh, and it also gives you, most importantly, the Force Organization Army Builder. So this is your Force Org chart, if you like. Okay. So it's called the Pitched Battle Chart, and it says what to put in your army at each point size. Right. Um, so, if you're wanting to build an army of a thousand points or less, which is about probably four units, maybe five, six possibly if you're in Skaven, <laughs> um, then you are allowed one to four units with the leader role, two plus units must have the battle line role, zero to two artillery, zero to two behemoths, zero to two endless spells, up to 200 points of allies, and any number of anything Thanks, else. Sir. And to work out what all that means, you go in here, or you go in your battle tome. Okay, so just a clarification, because I think I understood. So, so is Force Org, uh, the Force Org solely determined on the game size and not like pre district It's like 40k uh, is now, kind of, um, where the game size tells you the minimum and maximum of what you're allowed to bring. It's very open, because most units don't have any of those roles, but... Um, that is where, that tells you the maximum amount of, say, HQs you can bring and the minimum amount of troops you must Interesting. bring. So I don't just take detachments in this and then I like to fulfill those force or requirements. No, not at all. You have to fulfill those requirements to play a matched game, but what those units are, are determined by your battle token. Okay. This is also in the General's Handbook, so you could find it in here if you just wanted to check all the armies. But in the back page, the very back of your battle tome, just inside the back cover, you'll find a list of points. Oh, yeah. So yours go over, there are two pages of them, and they tell you what each unit's minimum and maximum size is, and what points cost each increment has. So take, for example, Warplock Jezails, they're the third unit down. Yeah. They are a minimum unit size of 3 and a maximum unit size of 12. And they cost 140 per 3. You buy them in increments of 3. Um, 
You also have, for example, clan rats are taken in 20s. So you pay 120 points to take 20 of them. However, they have two points costs. If you have a unit with a slash in its points mm -hmm. cost, then that is the cost of the full size unit if you take it up to maximum size. It's a horde benefit. Okay. So, so 20 clan rats cost 120. Two units of 20 clan rats would cost 240. But one unit of 40 clan rats would cost you 200. That's what that second points cost yeah, indicates. That makes, that, makes more, that makes a lot of sense, actually, to be fair, because... Yeah, so you don't customise it really. You don't buy units model by model or equipment by equipment. You buy them in increments and then equip them as you wish. That does make sense because of, um, let's say, on the next page, it's Storm Vermin. They go up to a, a sort of a squad size of 40, or 40, but 140, 140 yeah. per. That'd be a very expensive uh, unit if it was... Sort of yeah, so, so it's a saving of 60 mm. points is what you've yeah. saved. Yeah. Um, but it's only if you go to full size. If you buy 30, you don't get any yeah, discount. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, and you'll also see a tab called Battlefield Roll. It's the fourth tab across. And that is what corresponds to the pitch battles in here. Okay. So that will tell you which units qualify as battle line units, a.k.a. Mm. troops. It will tell you what units are leaders which ones are behemoths, a.k.a. monsters, and which ones are artillery. Some units have two rolls, and where they have two rolls, you pay out of both tabs, I think, unless it's battle line. Let me just double check. Yeah, I, I know mostly what I'm doing, but because um, I don't know every little bit and bob, it's yeah. worth just double checking. I'm looking sometimes. at the second page, and half the page has no distinct battle line roll. And so you... Yeah, so what that means is that they don't take up a full sword slot. You can have as many of them as you want, as long as you meet the other requirements. <laughs> you can have unlimited rat ogres. <laughs> as long as you take two battle line units, yeah. That's amazing. Um, so it says that a model that is a leader and a behemoth, for example, um, a vermin lord, they count as both slots. So they would take up one behemoth slot and one leader An slot. Interesting way of balancing it out. Like, I'm so used to Boy mm. K, where it's like... You, these things take heavy support slots, for example, and um, uh, you've only got so many of those. But taking two force orgs, I'm guessing that means that the ones that take up multiple slots are quite powerful on the table. When they... The vermin lord, well, it's mainly to get around the fact that you can't just have four vermin lords in an army, because that would be silly. Yeah. Um, so it's to get around that problem. And then certain armies will get exemptions to that. For example, if a unit is battle line and behemoth, like a mega gargant, like a gargant in the new Sons of Behemoth, that doesn't count towards your behemoth cap the same uh, way. So is that, is that like um, so, how um, Flesh Eater Corpse can run like six zombie dragons and not have any restriction on it? Uh, kinda, yeah. Kinda. The other thing that's on this back page, and this is where most of the words is this notes tab. Now, Skaven is a complicated son of a gun, so you picked a really awkward one okay. here. But that notes tab will tell you certain things. So, for example, certain units are listed as unique, which means you can't have more than one of them. Things like Screech Vermin King and Thankwall. Okay. So, because they're named characters, you can't have more yeah. than one of them. Makes sense. A lot of them, though, have battle line if. So, if your army meets certain conditions... Mm -hmm then you may take this unit as a battle line instead. It It's kind of like unlocking them as an extra troop option in old 40k, or like rights of war in 30k. Okay, okay. that makes sense. Uh, and that comes back to your, what's called, allegi allegiance ability, which we'll get onto in a minute. But to take an example, Rat Ogres, if your army is skaven tied, so you've, paid, you've bought a Skaven army, and your general is either a master clan, so a Gracier or a Vermin Lord, or it is a clan Molder leader, because your general's like your warlord. So if your leader comes from clan Molder, which, for example, would be a master Molder, I think. Let me just double check, because I can never remember Skaven that well. Um, is it the master Molder? All in order. Ah, um, so yeah, a master molder, if that was your general, for example, and all the rest of your units in the army had the clan molder keyword, 
then that unit would become a battle line There's unit a lot for of you. And ors kind of with how battle line works in this yes. one. Yeah, so Skaven is one of the most complicated of all. Lumineth are just as awkward, uh, because Lumineth have it where if you take a unit of spearmen as a battle line unit, you can then take a unit of archers or cavalry as a battle line unit. But archers and cavalry are not battle line on their own. It's a bit weird. Um, some armies are much simpler than that. Skaven is one of the more complex ones. Essentially, it allows you to theme your army to an extent. If you build your army around a theme, then you unlock benefits for yourself okay. if you do that. Or are you sticking to fluff kind of deal? Yes, exactly. Um, so once you've got your head around what your army can actually do, the next thing to look at, once you know how to play the game, is the allegiance ability. So that comes in the middle of the book, right after the model showcase. It's the start of the gaming section. There's always a big double page spread, and one side it says Allegiance Abilities. Uh, Comes right after the pictures. Um, just trying to get to... There we are. Yeah, finding your way around a book for the first time is awkward, uh, because it is laid out differently. That. Yeah. Yep. So that lies generally right in the middle of the book, and that tells you all the benefits you get for playing a Skaven army. So you can play without them, you can always play without them, but if you are a Skaven player with a Skaven tied army, then you get these traits essentially. So for Skaven, for example, you, all of them get access called to the teachings of the Horned Rat. So they get to jump in the way uh, of melee attacks for their heroes because their heroes <laughs> are cowards. Uh, they can run away from combat because they're cowards. Uh, big units get better hit and wound rolls to make up for the fact that they're all individually terrible and they get more bravery which is the equivalent to leadership um if they have a big unit so it they're thematic bonuses so big units and cowardly <laughs> heroes like i didn't oh uh, i mean because i haven't fully obviously read this through because i've I've had this. For, I've had this for ages, but yeah. I haven't had a chance to fully sit down on it because I was still like umming and ahhing between this and the um, Yossi Ark Bone Reapers. And now I've, but now that I've oh, yeah. to this, is now to actually learn how I'm supposed to build an army for this. But yeah, so so I guess the next question then is, what theme do you want? So there's two ways to go about it. If you're a competitive player, you'll go on to the great clans and yeah. pick the best one, which is fine. Or you'll have a theme in mind for your army and we'll pick the appropriate clan uh, or the appropriate so sub-faction. The reason I I picked uh, Skaven was mainly because of... Um, oh, I've forgotten his name. He's one of the new newish generals in um, Total Warhammer 2. Uh, let me... Skaven... Okay. Ikit Claw, Ikit Claw? The, the one with the nukes. <laughs> ah, yes. So Ikit Claw uh -huh. doesn't exist anymore but he belongs to clan scryer uh, so you would say your army belongs to clan scryer and you would gain access to the warpstone sparks allegiance ability on top of everything else uh, let me just whereas for example if you were to play let's say lumineth realmwoods which is my current army of the day uh, they have what are called the great nations instead of the great clans so what they have is if you are a Lumineth player, you get access to certain abilities, those being like two units get to fight instead of one in the combat phase, the Ether Quartz and diddly diddly d. But you optionally, and it is optional, can take a great nation which will benefit you in a certain way. So it might be, for example, if you take Emetrica, you get better with your Hammer Elves. If you take Sire, you are better at using Ether Quartz and so on. Uh, and each of the great clans in Skaven, each of the sub-factions in Cities of Sigmar, Stormcast, uh, Ossiarch, Legions of Nagash, all of them have different benefits around a certain theme. So you'll pick either the best one, if you're power gaming, or the most appropriate one theme-wise for you, which in your case, say, is Clan Scryer. So what that will do is your Clan Scryer heroes get Warpstone Sparks that they can use to improve their casting roles, uh, improve their shooting attacks or improve their melee attacks at the cost of nearly killing <laughs> themselves. Uh, 
Sorry, I'm just reading. So There's only the heroes that specifically that benefit from. So in this case, it's just your heroes. However, for example, if you were to take Molder, which is the Rat Ogre one, then any of your fighting beasts can be boosted for each of the master Molders that you have. So the more of the hero you take, the more of your monsters get right, buffed. Okay, that makes sense. So they're very much like uh, Space yeah. Marine chapter tactics, as an example, where they'll, they've been it. Yeah, they are. They don't uh, so benefit the, everything, but the things they do benefit, they benefit them quite significantly. Yes, so there's a generic set of things, like equivalent to, and they shall know no fear, if you like. That's your standard allegiance okay. ability. You then have... Your chapter tactics are the great nations, the great clans, the cities, the legions, whatever, and they are optional specializations. Okay, it makes sense, it makes sense. So this... After yeah, that, things get messy. This is where I was so, mainly struggling with, because there's all... Mm, the biggest problem is that you pick picked Skaven, and Skaven are complicated as heck. So, like, after that... Just to interrupt, you can... sorry, before I even... Between that, yeah. the segment of your basically chapter tactics and to the first character, the first profile is that many pages. <laughs> yeah, 30. 30 pages. It's 30 pages. So it's a bit overwhelming. Yes. So the next thing you want to do is build your army at that point, is build your army. So once you've decided on what nation or what allegiance ability you're taking, you generally at that point will build your army. You can use the battalions to help you. They're kind of like rights of war again, where you take certain units and get a further benefit that you pay for, but they only benefit the units in the battalion. But once you've decided on your allegiance ability, you can build your okay. army. Um, so if we go with Scryer, there's an optional battalion called the Warp Cog Convocation, which is the most complicated okay. battalion ever, yeah, me... because it's made up of engine covens, and each engine coven gets an ability that benefits itself, and then they all get the benefits of being in a Warp Cog Convocation, and it's, oh god, it's an absolute yeah, mess. Yeah, that's, that's where I was... So, so we'll skip past that, that's the complicated bit. If we're getting started, we'll skip past battalions and just build the army at that point. So you will know now, you'll be able to go to the back and look at which units are battle line for you. So for example, Scryer Acolytes now are battle line for you. Um, or Storm Fiends, the, you know, the big rat ogres with the Gatling guns. They're now battle line for you. As long as the rest of your army is Clan Scryer and you check that on the war scroll, the keywords are at the bottom. So as long as every unit has the Clan Scryer keyword, you can then put that unit into the army and your Storm Fiends will still be battle line. So, for example, in Clan Scryer, you would get access to, to make Storm Fiends a battle line unit, you would have access to all the weapon teams, plus the Doom Wheel, Jezail, Storm Fiends, Warp Lightning Cannons, Scryer Acolytes, Bombardiers, which are the ones with Doom Rockets, Warlock Engineers, and the Arch Warlock, which is the Ikit Claw model. So they're the units you could take if you want your Storm Fiends to be battle line, or you can diversify, mix and match, but still take the Scryer Allegiance ability. Uh, okay, so just to make sure, I, I'm just going to say it back to you just to make sure I did fully comprehend it. Uh, so yeah. if it's one of these, um, so if it's if one of if it's one of, if I want to take a unit, um, if yeah. it doesn't have a battlefield role. Do I not have access to it unless it says Clan, clan Scry, or does that mess up my... Um, does that... it, you, ha you can take it, but it will mess up your battle line Okay, options. so let's say, just to put example, I've got, obviously... Uh, let's find... Uh, where is... Sorry, I, I still don't... So let's say you want to... Actually, I'll give you one. Let's say you wanted to take... Um, a I, a big unit of storm, yeah, storm burning. I like storm burning. So you want to take forty storm yeah, burning? Why not? <laughs> well, well, fine. But they have the clan verminous keyword. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong spot. Sorry, I'm looking at the back of the book, not the. So, it, so on their war scroll, they say uh, clan verminous. I, mis I misunderstood. As a result, that way, all your units would not be clan scryer, and you could not take storm fiends as battle. Uh... You could, however. 
take storm vermin as battle line because they are battle line if you are skaven it doesn't matter what clan you are if you are skaven your storm vermin are battle line so if, I, if let's so it's kind of like um uh like um combat doctrines is it uh, if i have a i can have a space marine army which has pulls from different factions, and it'd be a legal list. But that would be a Space Marines list. But if I wanted, let's say, the Imperial Fists to be my doctrine, and all that, I'd have to be all. They'd have to be able to all take the Imperial Fist keyword, and then that. Or if I don't, it breaks. Correct. The line. Correct. Um, and what that would mean is, in a lot of armies, it gives them the right. keyword. Okay, that makes more because, sense. Because, so like Imperial Fist gives every unit the Imperial mm -hmm. Fist keyword. In Skaven, they're all locked behind different clans. So any unit you take is from a particular clan okay, already. So let's just. Um, so in that case, yes, it would mess you up, but it would be like saying, um, for example, yeah, as you said, Corsaro Khan and an Imperial Fists army doesn't mm -hmm. work because he'd have to. There'd have to be a Space Marines list to take them all together, and it's the same thing here, kind of. Uh, you still have a clan scryer army, but you would not be able to take storm Ver storm fiends as battle line because not all your units are clan right, scryer. Right. Okay. So if I can. To give you a simpler example, actually a much simpler it example, if I go to my Lumineth, because you picked the hardest blooming book in the game, and I realize the viewers are like, "Why are you doing I like this?" Rats. <laughs> so, so, for example, in Lumineth. The Alarith Stone Guard, which is yeah. the Hammer Elves, they are battle line if your great nation is Yemetrica. Right. Period. Mm. So if your great nation is Yemetrica, you have battle line Hammer Elves. No questions asked. That's the normal way it works. So it will be either if your clan is right, or your nation or your allegiance is right, or your general is right, you get extra battle line. Skaven are more complicated because okay, they're so, Skaven. So just for example, I've got clan rats here, which is like the most basic of basic infantry. Yeah. It doesn't at all on it. It says Skaven, Skaven Tide, Clan Vermis, and Clan Rats is the keyword. Because it doesn't take has the clan scryer word in it specifically stated, I wouldn't then be able to take the storm feeds as the battle line. Yes, your clan rats could be the battle line for you. And you could still have a clan scryer mm. army, but you would not be able to take the clan scryer units as battle line in your uh, case. So it's so this is the much more. If I'm going for a specific clan, it's very much. If I want to maintain the specific battle lines, and that I have to be very specific with what I take. Yes, Skaven mm. want you to go all in to get the unique units, but there's nothing to stop you taking two units of clan rats and then taking as many storm fiends as you want that you can fit, they just won't be battle line. And that can matter sometimes when it comes yeah, to controlling objectives. Yeah, because I imagine battle line is the same thing as obsec in 40k, where they... Not always, but it's more like... Um, it's more like sometimes... He so, for example, heroes and monsters and behemoths sometimes overscore um, in certain things, and sometimes battle line can overscore. Right. Uh, it's not as universal as obsec, because each mission okay. is different. Ah, uh, so the... So basically, it really depends on the mission I'm playing, whether or not the battle line is as relevant as it would be. Yeah, it, it, at the end of the day, the battle line is the minimum requirements you need to Makes take sense. the army. Um, so that's what you've gone through. So at that point now, you've picked your allegiance ability, and you've built your army around it to a greater or lesser extent. You've picked your general, um, or you haven't picked your general yet. You've picked your heroes, you've picked your battle line, and you've filled up the rest of your points. Normally, we say to about 2,000 is the general optimal number that AOS plays at, uh, but 1,000 is absolutely fine as well. Can I just ask one more question on the on the building topic? Yep. Um, so if I have all my Storm Vermin, because, because the way the points work, I have X amount of slots for X amount of things, just to make sure I'm understanding yep. correctly. I could take, five, let's say, five Storm Fiends as battle, five squads of Storm Fiends as my battle line, for example. Because, uh, yep, because clan rats uh, don't have a, um, is it called a clan rats? Uh, let's say, no, let's go rat ogres, for example. They don't have a battlefield role on them listed on yep. the thing, only they become battle line on certain things. I could, I could still, I'm yeah, not yeah, capped yeah. at how many different 
how many rat ogres I could in theory take. No. You can take as many rat ogre units um, as you have points Does this left. game have yes. any, any kind of rule of three, like 40k does? Um, it's, I don't believe it. I, there may be a rule of three somewhere, but it's certainly not as enshrined in law as 40k's is. And I might have missed it because generally the optimal solution is you'll never have enough <laughs> points to spam the same unit that many no. times. Um, so quite often, for example, with your Rat Ogre example, I've never seen a case where you can't take loads and loads of a certain unit. Because some units, some armies only have mm. one battle line. So they may be limited in how many options they actually have for right. building the core of their army. Um, I think that's true of um, Ossiart, possibly. Uh, Ideneth Deepkin, if you take the rock, uh, will always have a second battle line option, but that's only if you take an Ideneth army. Um, so, so yeah. Does that clarify list uh, building I believe at so, all? Yes. I think I understand that now. Okay. Okay, so once you've built your list, you'll end up with some loose points, by the way, at the end. You might notice you don't add yeah, up to 2,000 there's dead. some very off numbers at the back, because you don't pay, for, I'm assuming you don't pay for war gear mm. in this as well, because they look like it's all baked into the profile. No, you don't. You know, each if there's units with different costs for different war gears, they'll have different profiles. They'll have different okay, war scrolls entirely. Uh, um, if you end up with, like, 50 spare points and you can't fill it, you can buy... A command point oh, really? for 50 points. That is another option. Um, you can also, if your units fit a battalion, you can mm. buy the battalion and that will allow you to deploy faster, get an extra command point and also get access to those unique special rules and you get an additional That's relic fancy. for doing that. <laughs> um, and you can also buy endless spells, which are spells that every wizard in your army knows. Uh, but that's all okay. explained in the core. Yeah, but we're not we're not looking at that. We're looking at trying to get an a escaping army yeah. on the table kind of deal at the moment. Yeah. So now you've mm -hmm. built your army. The next thing to do is equip your heroes. So this is where the bit in the between the allegiance <laughs> ability comes in. Command traits and artifacts and mm -hmm. stuff. Let me just get to the page real quick. Uh, allegiance command traits. Here we are. Yeah. So. Skaven, again, is horrid because there's six different clans, but each of the command traits is equivalent to a warlord trait. Your general may take or roll one of those traits. Um. <coughs> so, for example, for you, you would roll off of Warped Inspirations and pick one for your general. Because you're Scryer. Oh, sorry, I misread something, might be. Uh, I thought... No, it's fine. Oh, I've got... Oh, that's a hero ability. I went too far. That's my fault. <laughs> okay, so Warped Inspiration, no so... So you could pick one of those for your general. One caveat. Named characters cannot take so one. Not... So it is quite common for named characters to be in armies and not be the general because they don't get the warlord traits. It's not like 40k where they have locked warlord traits. Right. They get none. I was, I'm guessing that character, named characters in this game would, might be pretty powerful because I've heard some horrible things. Nagash is probably the yeah, most I've powerful heard some model horrible in the things game. about Nagash because apparently uh, you can like, resurrect half an army if you're lucky or something like that. Yeah, and also kill anyone from anywhere with an umbral spell portal and hand of dust. <laughs> it's an awful combo. But um, some of them have like command abilities baked into their war scroll, but often you'll take a non-named character as your general to get a command trait. It's just a warlord trait. That's all it is. And that is normally quite complicated on which one you'll pick, because there's all sorts of power gaming I'm that goes on. I'm not interested in power gaming, so I'll just pick the one that's fluffiest to what I'm trying mm. to build, really. So Yeah. Now, the next bit is the artifacts. That's a couple of pages later. The yeah, artifacts so of power. Mine was, I believe it said... Um... Yeah. Dark Inventions for you. Now, you get one artifact mm -hmm. baseline, and you get one artifact per battalion that Why? you take. So everybody gets one, but if you pay for a battalion, mm -hmm. you get an extra one. Each of your heroes may receive up to one okay. artifact. So same as 40k when it comes to relics, kind of. Yeah, you can't just doom stack all the relics on one hero. 
Um, there are up to six. You can roll or you can allocate. The you typical roll is yeah. to allocate. So, always um, so for it, some of them are like the vial of the fulminator benefits you if you've taken war machines mm -hmm. like the warp lightning cannon. It wouldn't benefit you in others. Yeah. So you generally pick them. Makes sense. And as I say, it's one, one for your army plus one per battalion. You also get a command point for each battalion to use your command abilities. <laughs> but we're getting, we're getting beyond that. The final thing is if you have a wizard you may take a spell for each of those wizards. Your wizards are named on their war scroll. They will have the wizard keyword on their war scroll. Now, Scryer does. So, warlocks, warlock engineers and warlock bombardiers, the Scryer heroes, they do have the wizard keyword. And they may take a spell from the lore of Vault Galvanism. It says you can choose or roll for one spell from each of the for one of the following tables for each wizard in your army. It really feels like I have managed to somehow pick the most complicated clan in the most complicated army by accident. Scryer is complicated, uh, but to be fair, by working through the most complex example together, it might mean that the viewers have a better chance of looking at the simplest. True, that, this does help. Yay, we plant. We so yeah, each each so each model with the wizard keyword in a Skaven army, gets a spell off the, one of the lists that applies to them. So Master, so Graciers get that list, Scryer gets well, that assuming, list. Assuming, unless the profile states otherwise, it's always just one power. It said, no, it, you, the number of spells you can cast is on your oh, war okay. scroll. The amount of spells out of here that you know is told to you up here. It's okay. one. Now, Teclis, for example, he knows all 12 of the Lumineth spells. Greedy. But he can still only cast one, two, or four. He's got his unique magic beard. He's weird. <laughs> um, so Teclis knows 14, 16 spells, but he can only cast up to four. <laughs> yeah, Teclis. <laughs> Balanced. Oh, he probably is. I just I have no idea. Um, what um, I, the final thing that... Does it, sorry, go on. It's relevant to the power. When it comes to like endless spells, is there a cap of how many... Is it basically how many points you shove into them they can take? Yeah, so for every endless spell you buy, every wizard knows that okay. spell if you buy it. But you can only have one of it on the field at any makes given sense, time. So you can't have four purple suns <laughs> boom stacking their way across Damn. the board. That's not That's allowed. Why can't I nuke people <laughs> with purple suns? I just... A purple sun and a doom rocket is a pretty nice combo of nukes. You have access to both. <laughs> Because the endless spells in Malign Sorcery are available mm -hmm. to everyone. You get extra endless spells for yeah. yourself, which are detailed at the back of the book. Um, the final thing that if you've bought them, you always take is terrain. So Skaven can have free, and it is free, terrain that they deploy, the gnaw holes. Um, the terrain's is, free? Yeah. It's faction-specific terrain and you don't pay for it. So you get to deploy three gnaw holes on the battlefield as your terrain, and you can use them to teleport yourself around the board. That's free. Free. Why? <laughs> the terrain being free thing has caused debate after debate in the AOS community, but for now, they're free. I've heard free. things like, uh, like I've, I've, I've heard things like some terrain pieces are so good you're forced to take them. And I thought, oh, put terrain that you pay for because it's like really good and it has a good effect. The fact that it's free. No. No, the Magmic Battle Forge, the Carrion Throne that allows you to do endless summoning, the Corn Altar, uh, the Ideneth Boat, uh, the Skaven Gnaw Holes. There's so much faction terrain. There's only one per faction. I'm but assuming it's free. you can only take one lot of them because common sense. Yes. Um, as, so it says for Norholes, a Skaven Tide army can include up to three Norhole terrain features. That's... So you can take three of the individual holes um, and then deploy them around the board because you use them as teleportation Absol matrices. That's absolute madness. <laughs> it's, to be honest, it's not as bad as it gets. Trust me. Um, but not every faction has them yet. So some of the older armies like Daughters of Cain, Stormcast um, and stuff don't have them. Whereas armies like the newer ones, like Ideneth, Seraphon, um, and Ossiarch do with their Bone Tithe Nexus, right, for example. Sense. I mean, it's, it, it's dumb, uh, but just, yeah. you know, free power, because why not? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and in terms of building an army, that's it. 
you pick your allegiance, you build the army around that allegiance, you pick your command trait, you pick your relic or relics, you pick your spells or prayers. Certain armies have with priests and they take prayers. Um, and then you take your terrain. And that's how you build an AI okay. army. So the reason I was having such a hard time working it out is just mainly because I picked the worst one to start with. <laughs> You really did pick the worst possible book oh. to start with. You really did, Scarlett. You so really good did. At making my life difficult. Um, <laughs> mm. To be fair, though, it is a bit of a maze getting your head around a battle turn yeah. for the first time. Because the lucky thing is, AOS is really good because if you're getting started, then you don't need to do anything I just yeah. said. You don't need to do any of that. You just need to pick the war scrolls you like, plonk them down, and play. You don't need allegiance, you don't need traits, you don't need relics. Sense. If you want a balanced game, then you just take off the points profiles and you just drop the same amount of points as each other and you just play. If you want a properly balanced game, then you use the four sorg in the handbook and build two pitched battle armies and then you just play. You do not need any of allegiances, relics or spells or traits or anything to play the game. So as a starting point, I would suggest, arguably, don't <laughs> use them in your first few games. Arrange with your... Uh, if you get started with a friend, arrange with them and say, I don't really get all the extra re-rolls and stuff I'm going to get, so can we play without allegiance abilities today or anything of that, and we'll just get me used to piloting this army and what it does, using I'm just sure, the war spells. Um, friend would be okay. Like, he's got three and a half thousand points worth of silver neff. Yeah, silver neff. Yeah, the trees. Oh, the trees, yeah. And like, yeah, so they actually do also rely quite heavily on their uh, wildwood terrain yeah. pieces as well. Um, so, uh, in any ways, you're limiting your army's power, but you're able to learn the war scrolls without the complexity. Yeah. You can then add an allegiance ability and play with that, then add in battalions and play with that, then add in relics <laughs> and traits and spells and play with that, and now you've mastered the game. A step <laughs> at a time, because AOS is able to be modular like that, as long as you don't go to a tournament where everyone's running the power build <laughs> of the deck. Sounds about normal for forty k, for at least compared to forty k players at this rate. Uh, mm. But it's argue it's it's, it's kind of like forty k. It's like you can play with just data sheets, then you add in chapter tactics and other abilities, then you add in relics, then you add in warlord traits, then you add in psychic powers, and you just add in bits at a time. Sorry about that. It's fine. Okay. It's absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, I hope that was of some use. Uh, I haven't got like a series of questions and stuff uh, in terms of <laughs> FAQs of things people struggle with. In terms of collecting, um, the main thing I would say is A, start collecting exists. So if it fits your army, start collecting is your best yeah, friend. Think... Uh, Skavens, however, yeah. is the Clan Pestilence. So the other thing in use to you in there is the Walt yeah, Lightning. Which, is, uh, um, which is fine. I think the Sensor Bearers are not actually battle line or anything like weird restrictions like that one. Uh, plague Monks are in a Pestilence arm. So Plague Monks are like um, Scryer Acolytes. They're battle line oh, yeah, if you're a Pestilence. Like a, a specific detachment. So I've got like, it's not like a, I'm losing something by running them if I was to pick up a. Okay. No, you can take them. All you're doing is locking yourself out of certain yeah. battle line options. Um, and you still take 20 clan rats and 20 storm vermin, yeah. and that's fine. Um, yeah. So uh, now we've gone, over, we've gone over list building and army construction and all of that. Is there anything else like with AOS in terms of like the mechanics of the game or like, ideas with like building an army that... Are like, well, what do I actually do? <laughs> GW is better than Forge World at giving <laughs> advice to new collectors, but it can be difficult if you're not running an army that builds around and start collecting to sort of know where yeah, to start. Like, I, I'm I can interesting. get that. So the, the, basically the idea is I just wanted to play like a ridiculous gun line kind of army, just kind of feel like how I play um, Ica Claw in Total War, really, because that, that just seems like fu a fun time. <laughs> but... Yeah, and that's absolutely something you can do. The only limiter you'll have, really, is on artillery. So you'll only be able to take, at 1,000 points, two warp lightning cannons or jezails. At 2,000 points, yes. it's four. Uh, but storm fiends don't count towards it. The weapon teams don't count towards it. 
Um, so they're able to be in your army anyway. Uh, um, so I've got. I think if I just sort of one more. Oh, so Is it true that like summoning and the kind of reinforcement like don't cost any points in this game, or is that? Uh, yeah, so in AOS 1, you had to pay for your points you were going to summon during like the game. But, um, I think so. Um, in AOS now, whatever you summon is in addition to the cost of your army. So you pay, you don't pay for it. But not many armies now do much summoning. Um, and a summoning army generally doesn't have the speed or the shooting to actually hang in the oh, top that's tiers true. of AOS. That's not to say it isn't annoying, but it basically means that for death, um, you can summon back units that die without paying for a unit that hasn't died yet and paying yeah, for the same I, unit I, twice. I, I feel like uh, I've, I've heard like it that. out of context, mostly. And it's just like, so wait, so I can just infinitely respawn my skeletons if I felt like it. Pretty much. <laughs> yes, you absolutely could. But as long as you had one skeleton alive in the unit, you could yeah. do that anyway. That's true. So, it's... I feel like just some context things. Cause I've heard like I've heard from some people that AOS is extremely unbalanced. Like, um, I I don't know what the top tables are like, but if you look at the Meta Watch article, there's about five or six armies who have con who've managed nearly double figures of top five finishes. Um. Uh, and many of them have got at least four or five wins to their name as well. I'm not going to say it's perfectly balanced as all things should be, because it ain't, but then neither is 40k, so, you know, pot <laughs> kettle black. Um, but overall, I think on the competitive scene, yeah, AOS is exploitable and janky like everything else is. But on the core level, it's very quick to pick up. And because it's so modular with open war, um, matched play and everything else, and the are ways to add layers of complexity very easily uh, without actually costing you the ability to use your army properly. Um, I think it actually works really well as a, a pickup system as long as you don't just decide, oh, I want 3,000 points right away and to use all the abilities. Because I guarantee what will happen is you'll forget what you're doing halfway through the hero phase and be like, too much to do. I don't think do. I have enough so, money to buy 3,000 points of Skaven, to be honest with you, Chief. <laughs> no, maybe not, but it, it's a... It, this is it's not necessary to go for a full, fully cogs joined together army with yeah. all the bells and whistles immediately. The game plays absolutely fine. It's not perfect, but it plays fine with just the war scrolls. And you add the allegiance abilities, first layer. Add the command traits, second layer. Add the relics, next layer. Add battalions in, so you change your build slightly. That's another layer. You add the relics in, that'll cause you to change the build a little bit, but it adds just more layers without taking yeah, away from the core of the I game. I feel like when I initially picked up this book, I'm like, I want to buy Clan Scryer. So what's Clan Scryer's thing? Warp Cog Con Convocation. And it's like... Oh, this God, yeah, really that battalion's horrid. horrid. It's, so, it's such it's a mess. two pages, and, like, yeah, half the page of it there is fluff. But that's all just words on words, and it's like... A lot here. <laughs> yeah, it's wordy. It is wordy. Um, I'm not going to go through like building a list with you together here on this video because we only yeah, have so many hours and in it's our lives. Basically, but the starting point. I hope that. But I hope that that gives you an idea of like how a battle tome yeah, fits together um, in terms of what you need to do uh, yeah, and how to go about doing to me it. Like that, it's made it much more easier to digest <laughs> than it when it was before. Good. Um, so the one thing I would advise is either get the AOS app, it's free, uh, and you can get the points values up to date on there. It's a bit Zero, messy, but you it? can do it. Um, oh, is it you don't need Azir. Is the premium one, is it? Azir is the paywall inside oh, the AOS app. Um, or if you prefer hard copies and want the pitch battles chart and all of that, then you need the General's Handbook, which is, which is 20 quid. Nothing really. It's pretty cheap. Yeah, it's it's most, less than most, less books. Than most codexes um, <laughs> It is. Um, but yeah, that is, uh, everyone, a hopefully useful guide on how to army build and get started with Age of Sigma. So you can use the rule book to learn the game, then pick an army and just play it. You don't need to worry about anything else. Then you add in the points values in the pitch battle profiles if you want to actually play it with matched balanced rules. Now you've picked up the basics of a war scroll. And then you add in, in layers, using your battle tome, 
the allegiance ability, relics or artifacts, uh, battalions, command traits, and things like that. It's just a, a layered up system that will allow you to pick up the game. And in terms of what to buy, well, <laughs> read the book. Read the book and decide what appeals to you. So go on to, actually, if you have got the core rule book, it won't give you all the modern armies like Lumineth and Ossiarch because it was written, it was written two years ago. But in here, most armies have got something like at least a double page spread, all of their own. So, for example, there's a double page spread here about the basic fluff of the Ideneth. It's not comprehensive, but it's the basic fluff that would allow you to say, oh, they're cool, I'd like them. Uh, and things like that. There's little bits and bobs of showcases, artwork, lore, all of that that allows you to see what each army is like before you have to invest. Uh, and you'll be needing this for all the basics of the rules unless you get the free set anyway. So if you already own the core book, this can help you pick your army as well, with the exception of the newer stuff like Ossiarch and Luminet. Yes, I think that's uh, that's given me at least a, a good starting point, and now I need to start budgeting this. <laughs> yeah, obviously that's a whole different concern, but hopefully that's given you and the viewers at home a bit of a guide on things to do when it comes to getting started and building armies in Warhammer Age of Sigma. So thank you very much to Scarlet for joining me for this video. It's been a, a pleasure uh, walking through all this stuff and sort of explaining it because, you know, it helps everyone and I am glad that it's helped you, thank you very get much your head around it. Thank you for so thank spending you for coming. this um, hour. Is it been an hour? I don't know what's the time I say. Nearly an hour of teaching Nearly. me how to do this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's not too bad, and I'm glad oh, you did pick the hardest arm. I, I, I do this to myself. To list build. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. But anyway, thank you very much, ladies, gentlemen, Xenos of all ages, and everything in between from all across the Mortal Realms for tuning in to today's video. We hope you have enjoyed it. We hope you found it useful. If you have any list building or getting started AOS advice, please do leave it in the comments down below. How did you go about choosing your army? What influenced you? Um, and how did you go about building your army up uh, once you had access to the Battle Tome and all of that? So, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. This has been Tactica Imperialis alongside Scarlet Kingdom. And whether it's together or not, we will see you all very, very soon. Thank you very much, and goodbye.